You are now listening to the Fantasy Whisper Podcast with your hosts, Johnny, Game Time Hicks, and Big Travi. Well, hello and welcome to the Fantasy Whispers Podcast. I'm Johnny Game Time Hicks, and that's Big Travi, and we're here to give you that fantasy football fix. Now on a new day, Travis, we are now doing two episodes a week, and we're going to be recapping episode uh, or, or the games on Monday nights, and then as well as giving you guys those previews for those matchups that we all love every Friday. So we're getting used to our new schedule, but this is going to be awesome. Big Travi, how you doing, brother? Doing great, Johnny. And we're jumping into that regular season form, that regular season grind. As you stated, we will be reviewing the Sunday games and previewing the Monday games on one episode or the month. Yeah, the Monday night football games on one episode. And then we're going to flip it back at the end of the week and give you a preview of all the uh, regular season games that are on Sunday after reviewing the Thursday game. I'm really excited for this format. It's going to give everybody a little piece of each game so that they know what the fantasy relevant guys are, who to look out for, what battles to watch. I'm pumped for this. I'm pumped for the regular season. And we already are about to talk about regular season live action, Johnny. I couldn't be more excited. Let's do this thing, man. It is it is here, dude. Um, as always, we're the Fantasy Whispers. You can catch us on our podcast, uh, available on any platform that you deem acceptable uh, to listen to for your podcast. Uh, check our rankings out over there at thefantasywhispers.com. We also got great articles going up all the time. We have your weekly uh, waiver wire pickups. We have sit and start gems that Travis has put together as well as some odd and end other articles that uh, we're looking to put up. So make sure you check that out. All right, Travis, any other, any other news uh, before we start jumping in the end of the episode? No, man, let's do this. Let's kick it off. All right, brother, as always kicking off with our news and notes. news and notes from around the NFL. That's right, Johnny. News and notes now will be brought to you by our co-sponsor of the show here, and that is Fanatic. That's spelled F-A-N-A-T-I-Q. That's where fantasy meets IQ. Their tagline is win the week, win the next, and win your league, and we want to help you win your league, and, the, and so does Fanatic. They're going to bring us all of our stats. They're available on Apple. Uh, in the iTunes store, and, uh, you know, they're gearing up for their launch here. They're not quite available yet, but we're trying to get them out there. They have great, uh, these great charts, Johnny, and they have this great news platform that allows you to be able, basically filter through the beat writers, filter through the team news, filter through some of the analyst stats, and then for each player, it has a breakdown of their last three games. So obviously the very beginning of the year, uh, there's not going to be a lot there, but after we get a couple weeks under our belt, they're, they're, they're going to have great breakdowns of targets, receptions, yards, and uh, we're really excited to kick this partnership off with them. For sure, and what's great about them is they're constantly adding more and more to that app, and it's just a great app. Uh, we've dived into it uh, spe specifically, and, it, and it's great. We love it. So, again, go get Fanatic over there on Apple uh, iTunes Store. All right, Travis, you want to give us a little bit of a rundown on what's going on in the in the fantasy world? We had a bunch of injuries, a bunch of stuff to talk about because uh, we've been away. We, we did our fantasy football draft this past weekend. So now we're going to play catch up a little bit here and run down some really, really big news and, and quick news throughout. Yeah, so the first thing we want to talk about is the report that came out right before the game last night, and that is Basically, that NFL.com's Ian Rappaport is telling reporting that Carson Wentz is expected to be sidelined several more weeks. Um, so this is big news, obviously, for your boy, uh, Wentz, who's a guy you're a fan of. I think you have some stock in him in multiple leagues. And mm -hmm. also, it's just big news for, you know, probably the biggest news here. It's big news for our beer bet, brother. Yeah. We got a beer bet on Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, a whisper wager. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it might be null and void based on this injury situation he's not going to make it back in time yeah unfortunately however i think his job is pretty safe at this point um we Agreed. saw what nick, what nick Foles did yesterday Ugh. was not impressive at all 
Um, not not very many exciting pass catching uh, options in Philly, um, but we'll get into that a little bit in just a second. Other big news was uh, that came out was the Le'Veon Bell, and I have been getting a ton of tweets, a ton of questions asking me, what do I do with Le'Veon Bell? People freaking out that have spent a very, very high draft pick on Le'Veon Bell just to see him sit on his bench, not knowing when he should, when he's going to report. Frankly, his teammates don't even know when he's going to report, and they're getting a little bit frustrated. So, Travis, let the fantasy whisperer community know what they should do in order to try to hedge their bets or what they should do heading into the regular season and what your idea is on what, what he might come back. Uh, this, it might be a little too late for this, but James Connor, obviously you want to grab all the shares of James Connor that you can. If you did not draft James Connor and drafted Le'Veon Bell, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> you definitely should have. And the other thing about this is, I honestly think he'll report in the next couple of weeks. I don't think he's going to drag this on. I think there's a lot of hype and uh, hysteria going on right now. For me, you know, as of this recording, it's Friday. I could see him reporting Saturday and I could see him reporting uh, maybe even Monday, but I, I just don't see he, I, I know we have these swirling reports around. I just don't think that he, um, he was going to show up for this week to kind of, to shock the system a little bit. And and what we're seeing is the brass of Pittsburgh say, we don't really care. We have James Conner. And so I, I think as long as they say that, and that continues to be the story, I think you're going to see Le'Veon Bell show up, especially we saw Antonio Brown give him a vote of confidence uh, as early as yesterday. So I think that as the, you know, the real leaders in that locker room step up and say, no, we want Le'Veon Bell back. He'll make his way back. Yeah, uh, definitely. There will give you some, Nice little options today when we talk about maybe a little fill in that you can pick up off the waiver in order to, you know, fill that spot if need be. If you didn't draft many running backs or many confident running backs, we can give you a couple more options on today's show. All right, Travis, you got any more news for us? That's pretty much it. We'll obviously have some more unfolding throughout the day um, after this podcast is recorded. So make sure you're checking out Fanatic. Make sure you're checking out your other news outlets because as the injury reports pour out, you're going to want to see where guys are. Um, you know, I don't think there's anybody really that high profile not um, not oh, going to make it. Sorry, except one, for maybe like, go ahead. Sorry, I don't. I don't mean to cut you off, but just That's one okay. thing I want to know to uh, mention was last night's game. Uh, Devonta Freeman came oh, yeah, big one. with a knee apparent knee injury. Um, there hasn't been any news as of yet that has come out. I've been kind of pushing this all summer and I, and I had a feeling before this, I was a big fan of Tevin Coleman, even more so now I was saying you needed to draft Tevin Coleman. Now, Tevin Coleman, you, you saw him come in, he put up running back one numbers, uh, or very, you know, very, very solid RB two numbers could be at the end of the day. Um, so maintain and and be sure to check that out. Follow us, and we'll be getting you the latest news about yeah. Devonta Freeman. A couple of notes too on it's not exactly fantasy relevant, but could end up being a defense to target if they get more banged up. And that's the secondary for the Atlanta Falcons. Keanu Neal was done for the night with a knee injury, and then Marcus Trufant was also banged up yesterday. He was able to come back into the game. Uh, he just had some cramps, but just watch that secondary. If they become an exploitable secondary. Uh, you may want to target some wide receivers against them, so keep an eye out on that. But let's jump into last night's game. Speaking of it, Johnny. All right. So last night's game, of course, uh, was the NFL opener, and in that first half, Johnny, it kind of disappointed. It fell flat on its face. Uh, it's like the slow start kind of made the guys start slow uh, as well. You know, the rain was coming through. They had to push the start back. You hear some of the coaches saying that they practiced for this. I, I don't know how much I was yeah. buying that. But, uh, Johnny, we touched on the injuries. I want to talk about the guys that performed. Uh, case in point, Julio Jones, okay? Julio Jones is a monster human being. And you know what? It was it from the beginning, the Julio Jones show. And yes. so he came out. Caught the very first pass of the of the game. He had the very first fantasy points of the season. 
They Who also worked him. Just gonna be a monster, dude. Yeah, they worked him on that nice reverse. He had a sick stiff arm where he just shoved the dude right in the straight into the turf. Yeah. I thought he blew him right into the core of the earth right there with that stiff arm. Uh, and he just he just looked great. And then on the other side of the ball, the other big performer here was Jay Ajayi, right? Jay Ajayi started off slow in that first half as well, and you kind of saw him just getting getting a slow start you and Darren Sproles all of a sudden they you know Darren Sproles gets the start quote unquote start here he's getting worked a lot and then all of a sudden Jay Ajayi explodes 15 rushes for 62 yards but two touchdowns to really put his day over the top um so that one was really that one was really special for me as far as performances but Johnny why don't you talk to the people a little bit about Darren Sproles involvement yeah, so Darren Sproles actually surprised me quite a bit. I knew that he was going to get some carries, but I didn't think he was going to be this involved in the offense. You've got Corey Clement, who literally took the back seat of the back seat to Sproles and Jay Ajayi. So that was a little bit shocking to me. Again, this is week one, so it it is something that is new. We haven't seen all three of these backs in a rotation uh, it could be a week-to-week thing, and that's the part that scares me a little bit is that maybe this was game plan. Uh, we know that the the linebackers and that secondary for Atlanta is just a little bit quicker. They, they go with speed as opposed to size, so maybe they thought that they could just take advantage of uh, Sproles and his speed to go against that secondary. Um, he actually started this game, which was even more surprising to me. Uh, when you look at the on paper, J.J. was named the starter, and that wasn't surprising. But when you look at who got the very first carry, it was Sproles. Uh, so that is a little bit interesting. He is going to be an interesting factor on the waiver wire. Um, we'll we'll have an article out next week about that, but he's going to be on that waiver wire article. I can pretty much assure you of that. Uh, Big Travi, you want to talk about any other people that surprised you as, as far as big performers go? Yeah, we didn't have many more big performers. I will say a couple things did stand out to me. Zach Ertz with a few drops in this game. Um, didn't under at like, zero last year. Yeah, at that zero was all of his, last year. You heard Al Michaels talk about last night how uh, Zach Ertz hadn't dropped like he said, like he said since November of 2016. I think that's wild. Uh, so he mm. kind of looked a little rusty, which I, I wouldn't overreact to that. But Nelson Aguilar eight receptions on 10 targets, but for only 33 yards, um, I think this yeah. speaks more to Nick Foles and his inability to get the ball and the offense kind of rolling. We'll see if he shakes that off. I think Nick Foles is a guy that's going to be up and down. And I, and I think I've been saying this since early, you know, or late preseason, Johnny, and, you, and you'll back me up on this. I really think this offense is going to run through the running backs as it did tonight. Mostly. I think that they are going to lean on the run because Foles is not going to be a guy that's going to win them games. He's going to have flashes. He's also going to have flashes of bad play, which is what he had last night. So I think, yeah. you know, Jay Ajayi is a guy you're going to load up every week as an RB2 with upside, and you saw the upside tonight um, mm-hmm. of what he can be and in, in, in a weak winner in that sense, especially behind that great offensive line in a team that projects to move the ball uh, quite a bit. For sure. Um, and then you also have, you know, other guys that kind of stood out a little bit as far as Tevin Coleman to me. Again, I know I just brought him up, but Tevin Coleman is a guy that uh, and I, I want to say this. I want to mention this, Travis, if you're if you're in a league where all of a sudden the Zach Ertz owner is freaking out a little bit because he might not have had as big of a game as people thought he was going to have. I would be targeting him in a bunch of trade offers. And I can certainly guarantee you, I will be trying to trade in some leagues for Zach Ertz because people are going to come out. Like people get so antsy. If you are a Zach Ertz owner, be patient. That's fine. Yeah. He will. This is bound to happen. What he did last year is not going to repeat where he was, you know, scoring on average 12 fantasy points per game. That's yeah. not going to happen. Um, so just be cautious. But if you're not a Zach Ertz owner, I would definitely target Zach Ertz. All right, yep. Travis. Any under underperformers? 
There was quite uh, a bit last Yeah, time, I mean, I was just we kind of we kind of touched on that a little bit with Aguilar, Foles, Matt Ryan, who I had in my mm-hmm. if you read my column online, I in the play or stay away, he was one of my stay away candidates. I did not want any part of Matt Ryan this week. And it, you know, Good he call. just looked he looked off. The game had the rain conditions, he looked sluggish. Uh that defense of, of Philly is still mean and fast, and I just wanted to stay away from that guy. So definitely uh Matt Ryan there. And then for me, I think Zach Ertz, I, not to hit it again, but Zach yeah. Ertz was a guy I said that I didn't think uh, the, you know, the Wentz injury was going to help him. I know that Foles targets him quite a bit, but I just don't think, you know, I don't see that offense being as crazy high flying as they were last year. And I think, you know, there's enough more tape on Nick Foles for teams to figure out what he's all about. But yep. and hard, speaking and hard of knocks. under... Yeah, yeah, and Hard Knocks uh, completely right. gave out the game plan. Against That's him, right. So. Um, under speaking of underperformers, Johnny, we're going to jump right into our Week One previews with a couple of underperforming underperforming teams from last year, and that's the Cincinnati Bengals at the Indianapolis Colts. Right. So we have a point total of forty eight point five in this game. The Colts are a favorite, but I think the biggest storyline, and you and I will probably agree on this, is Andrew Luck is back, baby. He comes back to football here, and so upgrade that. You know, those offensive players, at least um, Andrew Luck himself and T.Y. Hilton going up against, you know, not a terrible, but a attackable uh, Cincinnati Bengals defense. Don't you say, Johnny? Oh, for sure. I'm excited. I will. am so excited to start T.Y. Hilton in this. I think that he is going to ball out. Um, I am very excited to see Andrew Luck play. I'm excited to see how Jordan Wilkins does in this game um, and how much they use him. They've come out and said he's going to be the starter. Uh, there was some news that Khalil Mack was, you know, back to practice slightly, you know, um, but he's not going to be ready to play this week. So it will be interesting for Jordan Wilkins. If he can really take this game, and really make something of himself uh we could see you know a changing of the guard uh which you and i have kind of guard uh have been saying all along all off season that khalil mack was too pricey uh, in drafts and jordan wilkins was the better value so um lucky for us and kind of unlucky for marlon mack we're going to kind of see that right off the bat so i'm really interested in seeing that um, Travis, you got any other people that you're interested on the on the um, Colts side? I did just want to touch on the T.Y. Hilton thing. If you look at T.Y. Hilton's games as a home, uh, well, as a dome or a, a road split as far as outside of domes, inside of domes, he's he averages about five catches for 80 yards. OK, mm-hmm. In, indoors, that's indoors outside. He's averaging about four catches for 60 yards. So he's actually, you know, that tick better when he's in the dome plus with Andrew Luck that's going to put him over the edge. Um if we're right. talking about uh this game though I'm really excited for the Bengals skill players against this projected bad Colts defense. So for me uh I'm loading up with shares of Joe Mixon this week. I'm loading up with shares of AJ Green and I'm looking in desperation as at John Ross and the flex because I think that the, and Tyler Eifert as well. I think that there's ability for the Colts to score here. It has one of the higher uh, point totals, like I said, with 48.5. Not a huge, not the highest, but definitely they believe it's going to be a shootout with these two defenses. So give me some Bengals skill players here for sure. All right. So we're going to jump into our second matchup of the weekend, and that's the Buffalo Bills at the Baltimore Ravens. Vegas has this as the lowest scoring total here at 40.5 points, projected points. And the Baltimore Ravens are favored by 7.5. Travis, how confident are you and LaShawn McCoy this weekend against a what should be a pretty stout Baltimore Ravens defense? Yeah, I don't want any part of LaShawn McCoy this year. I didn't draft him in any league. I wasn't confident coming into the preseason with him. They lost too much of the offensive line. We've got Nathan Peterman starting at quarterback. They don't have any other weapons to help keep the drives alive. I am staying away from LaShawn McCoy, especially in this half, uh, uh, especially against this defense that projects to be one of the top tier in the NFL this year. And last year was really good against the run. Um, So for me, you look at what the Bills gave up last year, or I'm sorry, reversing that for me, I like Alex Collins. 
based on what the Bills gave up last year. Uh, the Bills allowed the most fantasy points per game to opposing running backs in 2017, and that's 28. So Alex Collins fired up here as your RB2 with great RB1 upside. Uh, anything else you like about this game, Johnny? Uh, I am interested in seeing exactly who the number one for Baltimore is. You know, we've seen and heard, oh, Crabtree is the guy. You know, Joe Flacco likes Cra Crabtree. We've seen what Crabtree can do. But we've also seen Crabtree be a little sluggish to start off with new quarterbacks. Uh, the guy I'm really interested in seeing here is John Brown, a former yeah. ex-Cardinal. He's got a bunch of talent, and the talent has always been there. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. He had the sickle cell. He seems to have that under control now, at least in his own terms. So it will be interesting. If he is healthy, we have to remember, John Brown a couple of years ago was a wide receiver, too, for the Arizona Cardinals. So he, if he, you and know, as far as minimal words, work too, he yeah, wasn't, it wasn't correct. like he did a ton of work. Like he still got to 700 yards with very minimal work uh, or upwards yep. of 700 yards. So yeah, I, I agree with you. And the biggest thing here though, Johnny, I think both of these guys could hold value for as long as Hayden Hurst is injured because of the way that uh, Joe Flacco loves the tight end. He loves to work the tight end. Well, right now Hayden Hurst is out. I don't think that any of the guys provide as much upside and you got a big box able to move around the field and be that safety net you could actually see crabtree getting value from the tight end being hurt but i love john brown I, I picked him up in a lot of leagues as a guy i'm stashing and kind of waiting and seeing if he can stay healthy we know flacco loves the deep deep ball guys so yep absolutely all right jumping into the next matchup here we got the tampa bay buccaneers at the new orleans saints point total is 49.5 New Orleans is favored by nine and a half points, Travis. Yeah. Tell me popular, what this popular means. survivor pick for sure is New Orleans this week yep. against Tampa Bay. And what that means is so exactly. Here's my question. Did you did you did you pick them in your sir in the survivor I, pool? I, that I did for sure. Yeah, in every survival. I'm in two, I'm in three survivor pools and I picked the Saints in all of them. Mostly because we talked about the game before. It would have been between them or the Ravens. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Peterman could just shock the world in that one. I, I just don't think Tampa Bay's got it. I think New Orleans at home is a better play here. Um, I know you, a lot of the strategy there is to save the New Orleans Saints in a survivor pick, and I and I don't hate that if you want to move on and, and pick somebody else. Um, yeah. for me, this game though, fantasy relevance, the Bucks could actually lean on Peyton Barber a lot in this game. And if you look at my player stay away article that I talked about at the top, Peyton Barber is a big play for me because. I think they'll do exactly that. If they want to win this game, they're going to have to play keep away from the Saints and pound the rock. And actually, if you look at the Saints defense, which we know is really good and we know it's young and budding, it's actually stronger away from the run. Like it's a funnel defense into the pass. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think the run, the run is actually where you attack the New Orleans Saints defense. So I think if the Bucks, you know, if Dirk Cutter's logical, which we all know he isn't, uh, the Bucks <laughs> will lean on the run here. How about your boy, Mike Gillisley, though, getting signed less than seven days ago and, or about seven days ago now and jumping into that starting lineup or I should say the Mark Ingram role in this lineup? Yep. Do you mm -hmm. think it speaks more to them, you know, because they cut Boston Scott, right? So do you think that speaks more to them having the faith in Gillisley or in the fact that Gillisley the depth play and they're ready to hand the ball to Kamara 20 plus times here? Um, I, I go with the first round. Um, I think that they liked Mike Gilsley and they were waiting either Mike Gilsley or Hill, Jeremy Hill right. to be cut right. from the Patriots. And they were going to go with that person, no matter what, uh, Boston Scott did get cut. However, he cleared waivers today. Uh, they are expected to sign him back to their taxi squad. Uh, he was more of a Alvin Kamara mini, if anything. They liked um, him on special teams for the most right, part, of, right? Correct. Yeah. And so, yes, I understand that Gilsley was signed only seven days ago, but they are Sean Payton is raving about him. This guy, a lot of people don't understand how good he is around the goal line. He is one of the best running backs around the goal line per pro football focus. And I don't expect that to change. I do expect them to get the Mark Ingram rule. 
and I do expect him to have a very solid game. I'm projecting about 60 yards rushing, at least one touchdown, maybe inch in for two. Um, but I don't expect them. I believe Sean Payton when he says that he doesn't want to give Alvin Kamara a full workload. We have never seen that throughout the, all of last year. The most uh, rushes that Alvin Kamara received, I think, is, uh, if I'm remembering right, is no higher than 16. And I don't think that'll change this weekend, especially with a 9.5 favorite in Vegas. I expect a lot of rushing attempts. I expect yeah, this I, game to be put out, listen, put I, away. And I think if they're ahead. up big, they're definitely going to transition to getting Gillisley more looks. But I, I think it's foolish to think that it, it's not going to be Kamara's show to start this game and to be the majority of the game here. And the reason I say that is you talk about him not being – used as a goal line back. Well, actually, over the last five games, he transitioned to their goal like back, even with Mark Ingram. You look at him getting seven carries inside the 10 yard line over the last final games to Ingram's only one. So uh, Peyton was already transitioning this team to be Kamara's team as far as the backfield, in my opinion. Um, I think the suspension is only going to force his hand a little bit more. Yes, I do believe Gillisley is a nice play this week to score at least. But other than that, I'm not I'm not like confident in in trotting Gillisley out there against the you know the Tampa Bay front, which listen, Tampa Bay, you can expose them through the air, no doubt. They are actually pretty stout and one of the better teams against the run. So don't be fooled by Tampa Bay being a bad defense. I do think though, with the spread, with the fact that the Saints are favored, there's gonna, you know, it would not shock me if Gillisley walked away with five yards and two touchdowns. Like it, it would not shock me at all if that's how it, how it wound up. Way more. I think he'll go at least fifty yards rushing, and at least one touchdown. That's what I'm projecting. I understand that you love Mike Gillisley, no doubt about that. Gonna, uh, gonna, my last right. piece on this game is I'm just interested to see who the number two wide receiver for the Saints is going to be. I it looks like it's going to begin right now. Cameron Meredith. The news came out that his role is uncertain to start the year. So mm-hmm. kind of there's going to be some valuable plays throughout this year at the number two wide receiver position for the new Orleans saints. Uh, it would be interesting. I just keep an eye out on that. I think it'll begin, but I, I want to keep an eye on that. So moving on, uh, I want to talk about one of the games I'm most excited to see one. It's because Watson's back from his knee injury. That's the Houston Texans at the new England Patriots. The second reason I'm really excited about this game, Johnny, it's got a 51 point total. That is the highest point total of the week. There is fantasy points to be had in this game. It's just a matter of who. Right now, Vegas has the favorite of of New England at six and a half, so just under a touchdown. I kind of like that to shrink a little bit as the game gets closer, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. For me, Watson is back, so fire up Watson. This is his first time to shine, Johnny. It's his first time to show what he can do after the injury. He is ready. He is primed, and I'm ready to roll him out there. I got him in multiple leagues. Not been shy about my love for Deshaun Watson. I think he's a special, special player. For me, the bigger thing here on the other side of the ball is the Patriots' target leader besides Gronk. Who besides Gronk? Is it Chris Hogan? Is it Philip Dorsett? You know, who is going to – is it James White? Like, who is going to be the guy that really eats up the the, uh, passes from – I mean, because – Basically, the Texans, you're not going to run a ton on them, but you can throw on them a bit, like the quick yeah. the quick passes. So we know that plays right into the New England England's hand. Who's going to be that guy? I actually do think that James White will have a better game than Rex <laughs> Burkhead, which yeah. might be a very surprising you know, sentence or statement to make. However, when you look at exactly what you said, they're not necessarily – easy to run on this Houston front, um, but you can attack them through the passing downs. Now I'm not saying Rex Burkhead is not a good pass catcher because he is, but I do expect them to use all three backs and James White, um, uh, Rex Burkhead. And I do expect Sony Michelle to get a little bit on the field, maybe not a significant time. Jeremy share, but, Hill too. Uh, and Jeremy Hill, right? Exactly. So this is going to be an R- a major RBBC in this game. I do still like Rex Burkhead's value uh, moving forward. However, I think in this game, tamper your expectations for Rex Burkhead. I do like the James White play, especially if you're in a PPR league. Yeah, keep, right. an eye, keep an eye on Will Fuller's health as he gears up. He, he's been kind of practicing on a limited basis, but he'll be a nice play uh, if he can get healthy and back onto the field. 
So moving on to our next game, Johnny, we've got the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings up in Minnesota. This will be Kirk Cousins' homecoming, I guess, if you will, or his uh, his showing out game, his, his, his number one game, his debut, and the point total, they've got it at 46. They got Minnesota as the favorite by six and a half. And for me, and I think this is a little bit important to you, I'd like to see how this Minnesota backfield is going to shake down. Are they going to keep the training wheels on Dalvin Cook? We've talked about it um, as, you know, yesterday, John D. Filippo, the offensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings, says he doesn't know if they're going to put uh, a, t- a snap count or a, 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 a pitch count, if you will, on Dalvin Cook. Well, he's the guy calling the place. So, yeah. Uh, I hope he this knows. Is, um, this is like one of the worst news that you can get as a fantasy owner going into week one, right? Like you drafted Dalvin Cook in late first round, early yeah. second round, expecting him to be the bell cow. And what do we get right before the first week? Oh, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, it, it was it. You know, it led up to, oh, Dalvin Cook is 100 percent healthy. He's ready to go for week one. We're going to unveil him. And then. 48 hours before the game we get or 72 hours before the game we get um actually he might be on a pitch count yeah this yeah. is confusing to me uh we, he's been you know he's out of that kind of danger zone per se of re-injuring that knee uh they say you know month six to nine i believe he's on the the latter part of that injury length yeah and he shed the brace i'm not really worried about him and the injury Right. I'm more I'm more worried about how they're going to ease him back in and put this shell on him. Um, right. So for me, I would temper your expectations on Dalvin Cook. I think you'd agree with that, Johnny, right? Yeah. Temper me, your expectations, yeah. but don't panic. Do yeah, not right. panic if you get Murray in there on every goal line look and right. you're coming away from this game going, what the heck did I get into? Do not sell early on Dalvin Cook. The talent is there. He is way more talented than Latavius Murray. He is a better running back. It will come to the top by the end of the year. I guarantee it. Uh, yes. You will be looking at a, you know, an RB1 in Dalvin Cook by the end of the year. And that's when you want it to happen. I think the yep. San Francisco backfield breakdown is another interesting one here, especially for those that are looking at it and they lost McKinnon and maybe they scooped one or two of these guys up. Or if you're in the league and you, you, you picked one of these guys, you're going to want to watch how this breaks down. This is a good yep. litmus test because it's not a game – they're going to have to abandon the run at some point in this game. Yeah. So you want to see if anybody can be effective against this Minnesota Vikings defense. You'll know that that guy is for real. I actually think that this will shape up to be more of a Breda game just because I, you know, Vegas has them as six and a half point dogs. Um, so I do think that it sets up as more of a Breda game. And Johnny, uh, I think so too. I, I yeah. think that I would go with Breda here when you look at the matchup. <laughs> I right. would actually, if I'm, a, if I were a, a gambling man and I was going to go to Vegas this weekend and gamble, I would say that Minnesota is going to win by more than six point five points. You, oh, so you yeah, you think they easily cover that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think if you look at that defense, that is like the purple PD, purple people eaters part two, and that secondary is no joke. You got to. And they just Roca added George Aloka too, man. I, yeah, I could and, not believe that. I, yeah, yeah. So. As so a Packer I, fan, I'm not stoked about that defense, that's for sure. And I think this is it's this is what you're going to have to come to expect from this 49ers running back duo. You're going to have to play matchups. You're going to have to, you know, if it's in a positive game script or what projects to be a positive game script, I think it's going to shape up to be a more of a, an Alfred Morris type of game. If, the, if it's looking like this situation where the San Francisco is probably going to be down, uh, after halftime, it's going to shape up to be more of a, a burrito game. So yeah, we'll just have, we'll have to see. Guys and, yeah, we'll just have yeah. to see because Breda in small doses averaged about five yards per carry. So I think that he can be successful. He's obviously smaller. People are giving him that hard time. Let's see if he can hang though. He's going to get the first crack at it, I believe. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. But I think another big part of this is we're about to see Johnny. Does the preseason match? the regular season does that cousins love that happened in the preseason for digs does it translate mm. into the regular season and will Thielen owners be be wary after this game because cousins is going to feature digs and maybe even feature the um you know rudolph how do, how do you see it shaking out um 
Diggs is my guy. I can't go against Diggs. Uh, I think that it, Thielen's going to be fine. I think uh, people are tending to overreact a little bit to the preseason, thinking that Adam Thielen's not going to get anything, you know, going. Uh, I think he Adam Thielen will be a wide receiver too this year, and that's what I projected him to be. I think he's going to be fine. Uh, if you project, if you drafted him to be your wide receiver one, I think he might be in a little bit of trouble. Um, but he's going to be fine. Uh, and especially in this matchup, I actually do kind of like him. And you know why? Because chances are that Richard Sherman is going to be lined up against Diggs, not Thielen. Uh, Thielen usually will line up in the slot. So I actually do like Thielen in this game. And I, you know, again, these are guys that watch out for because owners might panic right off the button. And you might be able to snag these guys really, really cheap after week one. Don't panic if Thielen does not have a big monstrous week one. He's still developing a core with Kirk Cousins. All right. That's right. And speaking of developing with their new quarterback or with their quarterback, that is, we're going to look at the, you know, Miami Dolphins are hosting the Tennessee Titans. And so we, you know, we are going to project here, you know, that there's an upgrade to, you know, Kenny Stills and Danny Amendola in the absence of Devontae Parker. And we've got, you know, of all these new wide receivers, Amendola, Albert Wilson, <clears throat> Kenny Stills, and Kenny's not that new. Kenny Stills is actually the only one that's got some tape and some rapport built with Tannehill already. Mm -hmm. So I do think that Amendola gets a bump, but for me, it's Stills. If you've got Stills and you need a wide receiver play, a flex play, a desperation play, I actually like Stills in this game. I think the Titans aren't as uh, menacing on the pass defense as they are as on the run defense. And so for me, uh, give me some Stills in this action. Well, right. Anybody? What do, who, what do you, what do you think you look about? Go ahead. Uh, what do you What do you think about uh, the Canyon Drake um, and Frank Gore both being the co starters for Week One? What do you expect between that battle? I wish that Adam Gase would quit playing flipping mind games. He's like little finger dude. He's like playing mind games over here. I'm I'm sick of it. <laughs> I think that what you could possibly see is Frank Gore trot out there a little bit like Darren Sproles, who only ended up with five carries at the end of the game. And I think Frank Gore could be something similar where he only ends up with five carries and you turn around and Drake's got 15 to 20. Uh, I think Kenyon Drake, I think it's no secret, man. Kenyon Drake is a legit running back. He's done it. He looks explosive and he can catch the ball. I think this is a game that actually shoot, suits up to, um, you know, the Titans were good against the run actually last year, but they weren't good against running backs that could catch the ball. So they actually gave up a lot of receptions to the running back position last year. So for me, I think this sets up for a nice game for Kenya Drake. I think those who drafted him are going to be rewarded because they're going to have drafted him through all the nonsense and through all the BS that Adam Gase is throwing out there. Because just the same time last week, he's saying, I want him to get 15 to 20 carries and I want him to get five to 10 or five to eight uh, receptions or targets. And I want to run my entire offense through Kenyon Drake. Right. Uh, yeah. I, like, I think he's going to be somewhere in the middle of that. I think, yeah. and that's going to be fine for fantasy reasons. If you're, you're drafting Kenyon Drake as that RB two borderline RB three, I think you're going to be fine at the end of the year. Yeah. This is a guy that's explosive. He's going to provide you weekly RB one upside. So I think he's a fine play. I, I'm really more worried, Johnny, about the Titans. Can the Titans turn the key over for the offense. The preseason had me concerned. I think that they will eventually get it going. I think they may have a slow start though. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I'm rolling out Derek Henry still, I'm still rolling out uh, Deion Lewis. What I'm about excited. Corey Davis? Corey Davis. Now that's a great question. If I don't have any better options as my wide receiver too, if, if I, you know, went running back heavy and I drafted, you know, maybe one wide receiver and I'm relying on Corey Davis to be my number two, obviously I'm going to roll him out there. Um, but if I can help it, I would rather not roll him out. And I want to see if that chemistry is truly there. We haven't really seen it throughout the preseason. Like we expected to see it, but they also haven't played a lot together. So I want to give that a little bit of time to develop again. It depends on what you're starting in that second spot. Um, but Corey Davis, I, I don't expect him to be Julio, you know, <laughs> but 
But I mean, he, he could end the day with 50 receiving yards and a touchdown. Maybe um, I let me pull up. I could pull up my rankings here real quick, uh, Travi, and I can I could tell you exactly what I have been projected as um, in just a second here. I have Corey Davis projected at seven targets, four receptions for 48 yards um, and the possibility of a touchdown. Um, so again, the, the way touchdown touchdowns are fluky. So I'm yeah. more confident in predicting my yards. So like I had said, 50 yards. Yeah. I think, I think, protection. I think it just goes back to, we're firing up the running backs on each side of the ball here. I think you can fire up Derek Henry. You can fire up De- Deion Lewis. I think you can fire up Kenyon Drake. And I think you can also fire up Delaney Walker without any kind of fail. Other than yeah. that, you're not really want, want you want to wait and see you're, on the other guys. Yeah, you're gambling yeah. a little bit. Speaking right. of gambling, uh-huh. Jacksonville Jaguars at the New York Giants. Point total is rather low, Travis. One of the lowest of the weeks, and that's at 43.5. Jags are three point favorites. Yeah, what are you, or what, are you home, most, what are you most excited about in this game? There's so many storylines no, that can be I am most up in this. excited on a non I mean it's kind of fantasy relevant, but I'm really excited for Jalen Ramsey versus OBJ. I think nothing gets better than this. The last time we see OBJ tested by the likes of Josh Norman, he's out there punching, flipping soccer nets yep. or uh yep. kicking kicking ball nets. So we'll see. He's got paid now. Has he grown up? He said he was more mature because he wore a polo in his press conference after the contract. <laughs> I, I don't know if that equates to more mature. It means I need to probably order some more polos, get them in yeah, my closet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but for me, I think, you know, what you can talk about here in this game is the Keelan Cole era. It is. It now begins as he, he, he was a wide receiver one last year as Blake yeah. Bortles heated up down the stretch. So did Keelan Cole heading into the playoffs. Look for Keelan Cole to try and build on that. And, you know, because of the injury to Marquise Lee and Austin Safarian Jenkins has been banged up. He has an abdomen issue now uh, and is slow to practice this week. Maybe upgrade D.D. Westbrook here. And if you're looking yeah. for that daily fantasy or that desperation play we, we were talking about in the last game, uh, I think D.D. Westbrook is a nice pick here against a secondary in New York that, yes, a couple of years ago was a playoff team, but last year gave up on their team and was given up all sorts of yardage. So. I would say uh, that that I'm excited to see what D.D. Westbrook and the rest of the pass catchers in Jacksonville can do. Uh, uh, let, me, let me ask you this, Travis. Go for it. Corey Davis or, um, sorry, Keelan, uh, or Cole? Keelan Cole. Keelan, Keelan Cole. Cole. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to yeah, go yeah. Keelan Cole on that as well. I like that report. The Dolphins were actually pretty good against the deep ball last year. So the Dolphins secondary, uh, they have some issues. I think the Dolphins team has issues on the, but they had some, they had some, uh, they had some good defense against the deep ball last year. So give me Keelan Cole. And then I'm going to follow that up with, uh, are you concerned? uh, This isn't the best matchup for Saquon. Obviously we know what the Jags defense looked like last year. They were great against the run. Do you expect, um, you know, what are your expectations for Saquon coming into his very first game of the year, coming off of an injury? We're not exactly sure. They say he's near 100 percent, but uh, is any football player really near 100 percent? So so let the (laughs) fantasy whisperer. Um, nation know exactly what to expect from Saquon this weekend. You got to temper your expectations, but if any guy's going to beat a terrible matchup, it's a guy that's built like Saquon Barkley. So for me, it might be one of those things where the first half he's looking really bad, the the third quarter, but if the giants are able to keep this game close, I think that Saquon could eventually wear down that defensive line and bust one or bust a couple off to salvage his day. Do not go out and get crazy and, and pissed off because the Jacksonville Jaguars shut down Saquon Barkley. I mean, come on. Like, that's right, right, just exactly. ridiculous. Speaking of a talented running back, he, you know, Le'Veon Bell is a talented running back. We talked about on the yeah. top of the show. He plays for the Steelers. He will not be playing on the Steelers likely this weekend as they are at the Cleveland Browns uh, for their home or for the Browns home opener. The point total in this game is, you know, 
kind of a little bit on the higher end uh, or middle of the range. 44 and a half points here with Pittsburgh being a four point favorite in Cleveland. And I think it's just, you know, James Conner, his time is now. He is ready to go out there and seize there. And if you picked him up in a smart move, I think you got to play him as, you know, a flex or RB2 potentially. Um, just be interested who you would be starting him over. Like if you just didn't, if you were maybe a upside down guy and you went wide receiver heavy and you picked up James Conner, this is perfect for you to try and wait it out. If you picked up Conner because you were anticipating some kind of holdout like this and you had a Mark Ingram and you're trying to play uh, coverage for Mark Ingram, I think that's good there. But for me, uh, uh, the James Conner does not affect the rest of the weapons. You still fire up these Pittsburgh Steelers weapons, and that includes mm -hmm. Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, and Ben Roethlisberger. I think it's a no-brainer. We talk about Cleveland being improved. I want to see it first. Okay, I, I don't want to just say hard knocks came in, and now the Browns are not the right. Browns anymore. Give me the Steelers, who have had the Browns numbers for years and years and years, especially Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, I will take that. Johnny, are you uh, concerned... Uh, uh with how Josh Gordon is going to be used in this game. I am. I'm very concerned because we have been getting a flip-flop answer that has been worse than, uh, you know, some of the politicians that have been coming out of Washington. <laughs> it's back and forth. One day you hear, oh, you know, he's going to be limited. He missed a lot of training camp. And then the next day it's, Oh, no, no, no. We, he, we need him on the field. He's great. He's an amazing athlete. We have to have him on the field in order to win the game. He could be. And then it's, you know, it's back and forth again saying, oh, well, he could be limited on a snap count. Well, what does that mean? We already try to consider what that means for Alvin Cook, let alone Josh Gordon. So to me, Josh Gordon is a wait and see. I already was a little bit hesitant coming into draft season about Josh Gordon. And I want to see him do something before I put him in my starting lineup. And that's to be uh, frank and to be honest with you, um, Josh I will Gordon, wait and see on Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon or Keelan Cole? Keelan Cole. He's, Josh he's Gordon. Number one. Josh Gordon or Adam Thielen? Oof. I'm going Adam Thielen. Better matchup. Here's the thing for me. I'm kind of rolling Gordon out there. I know we're not comfortable with it, but are you really going to be okay? I think you talked about this yesterday. Are you going to be okay if Gordon's sitting on your bench and Gordon goes um, off for a touchdown? He's not a guy that's right. needed a ton of snaps. He is a guy uh, yeah. that has the big play. He has the big speed. He has the big ability. I kind of just feel like you're rolling with the upside anyways by drafting the guy. What, did you draft him to sit him on your bench? Like Todd Haley is the guy calling the plays. Todd Haley has said that he needs him out there. Todd Haley is playing his former team. Do we think I, that he's saying that just to get at the Steelers and get them to bite on Josh Gordon? I don't know. Maybe. I Here's what I will say. I think this is going to be an upset. I think Cleveland Browns will win this game. I think that with all the drama that's going on in news and, yeah right <laughs> uh with all of the drama that is going on in pittsburgh around Le'Veon bell and you know it you know the coach came out and said even if Le'Veon bell shows up tomorrow i'm still playing james connor i'm sending Le'Veon bell okay i you know the offensive line this seems to be concerned when you start getting offensive linemen to start weighing in on your contract negotiations I just think that this team is just too wrapped up in the Le'Veon Bell saga, and I think this is a perfect week for the Cleveland Browns to show, and I and I, I do expect Todd Haley to have some tricks up his sleeve, um, and I do think that Todd Haley also knows what Ben Roethlisberger's weaknesses are, and I think that he will tell the defense. Uh, you saw it, a little bit of uh, – um, oh, stand up in front of the class and, and give your little scouting report. And I would not be surprised if Todd Haley was doing that about Ben Roethlisberger. So I do project on my little, uh, I don't even know what we want to call it, whisper, whisper upset of the week. I am saying Cleveland Browns will beat the Steelers this weekend. Yep. All right. Johnny is Next. choosing the Steelers. I'm choosing to move us along here to the Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs at the Los Angeles Chargers. We have a point total of 48 up there in the tops uh, with some of the point totals. Chargers are favored 
three and a half at home, or I guess you could call it home. Uh, that Los Angeles, the little tiny stadium yeah. they play on the StubHub Center. Uh, yeah. Listen, M- Mahomes. Pop up, pop up stadium. Mahomes and this potent offense come to town versus, you know, one of the better defenses in the league with the Chargers. But Hill has actually had some success against the Chargers. You look at last year, he had 10 catches between the two games, 165 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, he burned Casey Hayward last year on a mm-hmm. on a deep ball. I just think that it it may not matter that this defense is elite. I think you're firing up uh, Tyreek Hill. I do want to see how Mahomes does besides getting the ball to Tyreek Hill. So for me, I'm yeah. waiting. Uh, you know, I'm stashing Mahomes because I think he's got top five upside. But I think that you got to wait and see against a nice opponent here in the Chargers. What about you, Johnny? What are some of the things you're looking at in this game? Um, for me, it's going to be how does Williams look? Right? We had yeah. we had a, a a ton of Mike Williams. He had a lot of hype coming out of college. Again, throwing ball from your boy to Sean Watson. And he was injured essentially all last year, so we didn't get him to see much. And then, you know, all these rumors came out saying, oh, Chad or uh, Mike Williams is going to all of a sudden catch 10 touchdowns. And then we got the news that uh, Antonio Gates was re-signing again with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. So for me, does that now negate that entire upside that he had? Does it make it better because now there's a drawn to Antonio Gates? Uh, this is something I'm going to be watching out for. Of course, I'm not saying to please do not start uh, Mike Williams. I think it's way too risky unless you're in a super, super deep, you know, 16 team league where you start three wide receivers and a flex and you might have to throw them out there. Um, but unless I'm in that kind of league, which I'm not, uh, I'm not starting. I'm not starting him, but I am watching what he does. Yeah, definitely wait and see. Yeah, definitely wait and see strategy on that one. Moving on here, we have the Dallas Cowboys playing at the Carolina Panthers here. Point total of 42 and a half with Carolina being the favorite here. I'm really excited to see probably the biggest storyline coming into the fantasy football season. And that's Christian McCaffrey being the bell cow for this offense. You know, they we all laughed as a fantasy community when Ron Rivera saying that he's going to run him 25 plus 25 to 30 times a game or 25 to 35 touches. Then North Turner backs it up and says, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. Then they back it up and he gets all these snaps in the preseason and looks great. He's put on weight. He, he, he improved his yards per carry in the preseason from his horrendous 3.7 last year. I am so excited for Christian McCaffrey. I can hardly contain it. And I think that C.J. Anderson, the more and more I look at it now, C.J. Anderson was simply a depth pick for the Carolina Panthers. And so for me, Christian McCaffrey is the guy I am most excited to see in this game. What about you, Johnny? What are you most excited to see in this game? Um, I'm definitely excited to see Christian McCaffrey and, and how he's used. I do think that they are going to use him as a bell cow. I loved your analysis on that, but I'm more so looking forward to seeing this Dallas Cowboys offense and how it's running. I think Ezekiel Elliott, I projected him to be one of the top rushers. I felt a lot more confident as him being the number one rushing, uh, running back in the league before his offensive line woes. But I still want to see what that offensive line looks like. I think that they could still be a top five offensive line. Zeke is going to be Zeke. He's going to do Ezekiel things. And that is supposed to be meant to to be in like a seductive voice there. Um, But that wasn't really that good of seductive voice. Uh, And then I'm excited to see these pass catchers, right? So we have Alan Hearns, which we've been talking about all year and how he equates to Des Bryant. But I actually don't think he's the number one that no, um, kind of shifted. Uh, huh? Yeah, it shifted to Michael Gallup and Michael Gallup has looked really good in preseason. He's starting to build what seems to be a pretty solid rapport with Dak Prescott. And so I, I look forward to seeing that develop even more and seeing what kind of uh, wide receiver Michael Gallup can be. Yeah, I agree. I think that's an exciting play to watch. And and moving on to the next game, I think similarly, we're trying to see who the passing attack options are. I think that's Washington. Mm-hmm. 
You look at Washington Redskins at the Arizona Cardinals. I think both these teams have questions at their receiving position. We look at the Cardinals. Uh, who's going to be the number two? We thought after seeing some preseason hype, it was going to be Chad Kelly, right? Then, you know, we're getting, it's like Chad Williams is the number two uh, announced yeah. on the depth chart now. So it, what do I think? Do I think Chad Kelly emerges here? Um, Johnny, you're the guy out there. You've got your finger to the pulse in Phoenix. What's your take on the number two wide receiver in Arizona? Um, so I expect Chad Williams to be, the number two, he has looked good. He, I know he has a lot of confidence in himself. He thinks that he is definitely a very, very solid wide receiver. And frankly, from what I've seen in the preseason, he looks very, very solid. Uh, Christian Kirk should really push him for that number two spot. Again, Christian Kirk is learning a new position. So I want people to be a little hesitant um, on, you know, it'd be a little bit uh, more forgiving for him. If you're in a dynasty league, don't drop him because you think that he fell to third in the depth chart. He, We have to remember, this guy's a slot receiver. Well, guess what? The best slot receiver in the league right now plays for the Arizona Cardinals, and uh, his name is Larry Fitzgerald. And so you're not going to overthrow Larry Fitzgerald in that slot. So he is being taught a new, and he is learning a new position. So he's going to have a learning curve. That's what it is. Um, wide receivers generally do have a learning curve when coming into the league. A guy I'm really excited, though, is RSJ. Um, he's been picking up a lot of steam over the last few weeks as far as sleeper status. I am very interested in seeing what they do with him. I was a little bit concerned about the usage during the preseason. I thought that they would use him a little bit more, but maybe they're just waiting to showcase that. They don't want to show too much uh, during the preseason. Don't give up hopes on RSJ. I think that RSJ could be a very solid tight end this year, and I still stick by my bold prediction of RSJ. But Travis, Re yeah, really looking quick. At Washington, you when, yeah. you're when you're looking at Washington, there are a quite a few of good options for fantasy owners out there. Let them know which ones you're eyeing and which ones you have a favorite on, uh, for. Here's the thing, man. Jordan Reed, Chris Thompson, all healthy Crowder, all off the injury report here. I'm excited to uh, see what they can do, especially with in in respect to Reed and Thompson. I think Crowder may struggle against that vaunted Arizona defense. I think AP is another guy that I drafted in a lot of leagues, but not excited to start up against the cards. You look at the cards defense last year, they gave up just 89.6 yards on average and 3.5 yards per carry to the opposing running backs. Not really excited about AP's matchup this week, but, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, you can say revenge game. I, I don't think that's really a revenge yeah. game for him there. No. I don't think he was there uh, for a substantial amount of time, but Washington weapons, I'm, I'm excited to fire up Jordan Reed. I think if this is the time you got to use him because you're not, you know, you're worried about his health. Um, could we see kind of a situation with Keenan Allen where there were a lot of injuries and then he finally got a year where he could just do it? Um, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case with Reed, obviously, because I drafted him in a lot of different leagues. So that's what I want to see happen here. Um, yep. But I'm really excited about that. One of our lower point totals of the game is our next game, Johnny, and that is the Seattle Seahawks of the Denver Broncos with a point total of 43. For me, the big story of this game, I think, with that low point total is really going to be the Broncos defensive line versus the Seattle offensive line. And for me, you got Bradley Chubb, you've got Von Miller just attacking that offensive line. It's a good thing Russell Wilson's mobile because I think he's going to need to be against this defense this weekend. <laughs> Time to go mobile. <laughs> That's right. He's definitely he's going to channel the same line. he's going to channel his bane and just really <laughs> have to do it there. But if anybody is Russell Wilson's Batman, that's Doug Baldwin. And we're going to have mm -hmm. to see uh, Doug Baldwin's knee plus the matchup with Chris Harris uh, has me kind of like saying, if I have another option for Doug Baldwin, he was one of my stay aways in my play and stay away article. Uh, yeah. Doug Baldwin was a guy I'm not, I'm not looking, I'm not excited to fire up this week. Um, uh -huh. I'm just not excited Speaking. about this game. Doesn't, doesn't seem to have a lot to offer, but uh, except for the guy that you're going to tell us about next, probably the most exciting piece in this whole entire game um, if you're maybe excluding Russell Wilson and that's your boy Rolls Royce, Johnny. Yeah. Rolls Royce um, news broke this past week that uh, Royce Freeman was going to be the starter. 
And I'm not really surprised uh, at all. We've been talking him up all preseason. Um, they, the coaching staff has liked him. He's looked way, way better uh, on tape uh, compared to Booker. We know what Booker is. Freeman is the guy. Yeah. Freeman, Freeman, it, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I think that Freeman is going to be a stud running back this year. I think that he is going to flirt with running back one numbers. And I'm rolling him uh, against this, you know, not so scary, you know, Seattle Legion of Gloom defense uh, that they'll be throwing out there on Sunday. Uh, but looking at the other side of the field, Travis, I do want to touch on something really quick. Uh, and I want to get your perspective because a lot of people might be faced with this. Um, there were some reports that came out about uh, Penny uh, being healthy for this week. They have come out and said that. Uh, Chris Carson, your boy, Chris Carson is going to be the starter, which I'm not disputing at this point in the season. I do think that Rashad Penning will be the starter come midway through this season. However, what should fantasy owners do if they either only have one running back? If Let's say they only have Rashad Penning. Are you, what would it take in order to roll out Rashad Penning? Uh, madness. It would take insanity right. to roll out Rod, Rashad Penny for me. What okay, I would so suggest it's... they do instead is pick up a couple of guys we've talked about already. Mike Gillisley, if he's still available, I'd snatch him up. Another guy that I think has a better shot than Rashad Penny this week is Jeremy Hill. I think just as as far as being on an offense that could plunge it in for a you know score. Or look, Garrett yeah. Blunt, if he's still floating around somewhere out there. I think these guys that have an ability to score that could really reward your day with just a plunge in score. Uh, I don't want any part of Rashad Penny. He's gained the weight. He's had the injury. He does not look good coming into this week and quite the opposite or coming into this year. I, I don't know about that. I think you, you they he does, coaching he staff. Good? Yeah, you should, nah. you should go check the last game tape. Go no, look dude, at the he, last game. Listen, tape. Uh, it, he can look okay, all right? So fine. He has a he has a couple of days where he looked fine on practice. Chris Carson's been doing it the entire offseason. So I don't I don't want any part of Penny right now. And and I think and the long shot is is that Penny will be effective way down the road when they're playing against defenses that don't care. But for right now the Denver right. Broncos were really good against the run. And you know? I give it, yeah. No, uh, I, I agree with that. I don't want any part of Rashad Penny right now. Like if you drafted him you should not be starting him anyways because the draft capital right. you should have spent on him is a guy that you're stashing on your bench for upside later. Right. So speaking no, I, I of agree later and later in the day, the Sunday night game is the Chicago Bears at the Green Bay Packers with a mm -hmm. point total of 47 and a half and one of the higher favorites as well. Another, a, uh, another survivor pick, if you will, is the Green Bay Packers at home. Uh, mm -hmm. Seven and a half point favorites. Even with the Khalil Mack news, these are fresh uh, points. Because I just don't, I think he's going to be on a pitch count. So I don't, I don't think it's going to affect this game too much. He's going to have his plays, but I don't think he's going to be playing a full set of snaps. For me, uh, Jamal Williams is a guy we're talking about draft capital. You've probably drafted as a guy you're going to start in your flex. He's got a tough draw against the Bears, uh, but the yeah. large volume in this game and the fact that they're over a touchdown favorite means he's going to have positive game script. I think he's going to reward players uh, that play them in the flex because I just think the volume is going to be there for him. Uh, eventually the Packers will pull away from this game and they'll probably be just feeding him the ball to close out a lot of the game at the end, which I, could I, make up I, his I, day. Yeah, um, um, I want to say you want to – this Bears defense is a little bit better than people give him or give them. They they did really well last year. Oh, yeah. They're um, a top 10 so defense this, last year. Right. So yeah. this this matchup could be a little bit closer than we think it will be. However, one major thing that I want to say on the uh, bear side of the, the ball, Travis, before we move on to our last couple of games here, and that is um, tamper your expectations for Jordan Howard. Um, I actually think uh, an underrated defense is the, sh the uh, Green Bay Packers defense. They've looked pretty solid through preseason. Um, and, and so you're looking at a defense that can stop Jordan Howard and, you know, we've been hyping him all season long or all preseason long. Please don't take that as all of a sudden we're off of Jordan Howard's bandwagon because we're not. We love Jordan Howard this year. This is just a tough draw in the very first game. I do expect Green Bay Packers to be sharp and be ready to go. It's Sunday night football week one, and it doesn't really get much better than that. 
So just tamper your expectations for Jordan Howard. I want to see a couple of things uh, from this Bears offense, though, in this game. I want to see, does that relationship with Trey Burton continue between Mitch Trubisky Trubisky and Trey Burton? Um, They played the entire preseason without Allen Robinson, who has been reported to be 100% healthy. They're just not rolling him out. Now, when Allen Robinson comes in, is he going to then take over that number one target um, away from Trey Burton? Are they going, is that going to help Trey Burton take away some of the coverage? That's something that we need to look out for. Travis, I got a question for you. Are you starting Josh Gordon or Allen Robinson? Josh Gordon. I think I yeah. would go with you on that one. I would go with you on that one. Just I've just kind of made a decision on Josh Robinson. Gordon. Like, yeah, I just haven't seen Mitch Trubisky really get it to one wide receiver consistently. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't seen Allen Robinson in a Bears uniform yet or like really do it uh, with Trubisky at that level. And Josh Gordon, I just think, is a guy that if you if you drafted, you got to be putting him in there. You got to be plugging him in. You got to have that faith because I think there's a good possibility he comes right in off the couch like he did last year and puts up a big game. That's just the kind of player he is. And you don't want to be the guy that didn't start him. I think the final piece for this game before we move on is which Green Bay wide receiver is it or even tight end? Is it Jimmy Graham? Is it Geronimo Allison? Is it Randall Cobb? Which of these guys fills in the number two slot? You think about Aaron Rodgers for the last seven years, he's had 35 plus touchdowns. Mm-hmm. That's room for two multiple touchdown players or a bunch of, you know, ancillary pieces. Yeah. But for me, I think it's likely that Jimmy Graham, I, I've, I've kind of changed my tune. I don't think it's Cobb. I don't think it's Allison. I think actually Jimmy Graham will emerge as the second go-to option in this offense. And I think you can book it there. Um, I think that's just the way it's it's transitioned. I think that's the way Rodgers has been talking about him. <clears throat> and this is the best talent they have ever had at the tight end position uh, with Aaron Rodgers. And that includes Drew Michael Finley. So I just think in the brief time that they had him rolling, I think watch out for Jimmy Graham, uh, especially in this week one against the Packers or in the game against the Bears. Don't be surprised if Geronimo Allison is a week one waiver pickup going into next week. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. All right, well, going on okay. to the next one. <laughs> okay. Um, New York Jets at Detroit Lions. Point total is 45. I love that as a Matthew Stafford owner in several leagues. And the uh, Lions are favored by six and a half. Travis, let the Fantasy Whisper Nation know what you're so excited about in this game because your boys on on this on this game do you expect a big game from carry on johnson uh i would kind of say that i mean maybe the, the lions are favored here so there could be some positive game script i think the most interesting thing that happened here is jim bob cooter said that carry on's role will develop based on play so remain patient with carry on johnson i don't think it's going to happen in this first month but I think by the end of this first month, you'll kind of see him taking it to the next level. Remember, he can catch the ball. So he has the ability to take away LeGarrette Blunt and Theo Riddick's roles and actually emerge as a three down back here if he can just rise to the top there. The bigger thing for me is it's all system go on all Detroit pass weapons. Stafford, Galladay, Tate, Marvin Jones. New York last year allowed multiple touchdown passes in 10 games. 10 of their 16 games, they gave up two or more touchdown passes. I like their odds to not be to have improved that very much. And um, I'm also interested to kind of see who's the Jets number one. We 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 project them to be down a lot this year, Johnny. They're not going to be very yeah. good. Who's going to be the guy that Darnold loves? Is it Anderson? Is it uh, Quinoa? Uh, <laughs> Quinoa <laughs> salad? Uh, <laughs> Quincy Anunua? Um, yeah. Who is going to be this? I mean, Anderson isn't enticing. Pryor. Yeah, yeah, who who knows? I don't <laughs> think it's Terrell Pryor, but no, I, I don't Anderson is the guy that entices me the most. He's produced 27 receptions of 20 plus yards over the last two years. So he's a guy that's a deep play threat. He's very exciting. He's also a guy with off the field issues. So you could be looking at that. Speaking of this is it. This is our final game of the week. The last Monday night game. So speaking of excitement, we got the Los Angeles Rams, Minnie Gruden or Sean McVay. At the Oakland Raiders, for John Gruden, we're talking about 
the student becoming the master here. And we're yep. going to, we're going to watch that go down. Johnny this is a 49 and a half point fi- uh, total with the Rams only being a four point favorite here. So Vegas is actually expecting Gruden and the boys to, to show up here. I just, I look at it on paper. I can't see it. This loaded Rams defense. I don't, I'm worried about the Raiders offense against them. Uh, yeah. I mean, unfortunately we haven't really seen a lot from this starting offense, right? They didn't really play any of their starters throughout the entire preseason. Some had to do with scheduling and playing teams right off the bat. Some had to do with uh, John Gruden, not wanting to show his cards too early. Uh, But you're right. This offense or this uh, Rams defense is nasty on paper. And the thought of, Khalil Mack almost know, being on man. this defense as well Ridiculous. is insane. You're talking like monsters of the midway type of, uh, you know, turnover when you're looking at that Rams defense. That would have been nasty. But they didn't sign him. I am thankful as a Cardinals fan that you did not sign him. But getting back to this game, yeah, I am a little bit worried. Uh, I had Marshawn Lynch you know, a locked and loaded RB two coming into this week. And then as I thought about it more, and as I did my projections, I kind of hindered those back a little bit. Uh, I think Marshawn Lynch is going to be okay. I think you're going to unfortunately have to roll him out there uh, because where you most likely drafted him was an RB two slot. His ADP significantly rose over the last three weeks of the preseason so maybe if you drafted a little bit early, you're able to get Marshawn Lynch in like the sixth or seventh round. You don't necessarily have to rely on that. Uh, but for the majority of us who we wait on our drafts uh, and we unfortunately saw his stock rise all the way up to the third round, <laughs> you're just going to have to you're going to have to roll him out there, unfortunately. And there's nothing much you could do about it. Uh, but yeah. And then as far as, you know, uh, Amari Cooper. They're going to move him in the slot. Uh, you're again, you probably don't have any better pass options besides Amari Cooper. Travis, Amari Cooper or Josh Gordon? Amari Cooper, un- unfortunately, even in this terrible matchup, because even with Marcus Peters and Nakib Talib, you know, they also have great, uh, a great slot corner as well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm blanking on his name right now, but the Rams are loaded. Like, I, I don't think there's right. any situation here where Amari Cooper has a giant day, uh, but his upside is probably just as good as Josh Gordon's to break off a mm-hmm. touchdown or to get in the red zone and to score a touchdown. And I honestly don't have a lot of faith in Jordy Nelson or, um, you know, some other weapons on the, you know, Jared Cook, other weapons on the Raiders to pick up the slack here. I think Jared Goff is actually a nice option to stream this week. Uh, based on how well he did against soft defenses last year. He was he actually really capitalized against plus matchups. But I think there is, is some concern not playing in the preseason. There could be some rust here. I'm also very interested to see how the target share shakes out with Brandon Cooks in town now and to see what yeah. he brings to this offense and, and where Goff goes, even though he loves Cooper Cup. He's, he has. Does he lean towards Cooks because of the way McVay draws some plays up for Brandon Cooks? Well, Johnny, I, we did it, man. These are yeah, all we our got, games. Man. Listen, got guys, we're, we're going to be doing this every week. So Monday, we're going to be breaking down all the action from Sunday. So catch the Monday show. Friday, we'll be previewing all the action during the week. Sunday mornings, we will be going live for a few minutes to ta- answer some of those lineup questions. So for, look for us on the social platforms there. And like Johnny said at the top of the show, we've got our rankings out every week. Waiver wire columns. I got my form of stardom sit in the form of play or stay away. And we are just excited to keep pumping out this content. We are in the regular season mode and I'm just excited to be doing this with you. My brother, we are kicking it off and dude, football is back. It's back. It's exciting. And, you know, hit us up with those questions. We'll be going Sunday mornings at nine o'clock uh, to get you prepared for your fantasy lineup. We'll be on Instagram live. So make sure you go and follow us over there. Download our latest podcasts and episodes on your favorite iTunes, Google Play or Stitcher. Well, as check out our rankings. If you don't happen to get your question answered on our show or we didn't go over it today, Check out our rankings, thefantasywhispers.com. 
That's Big Travi. I'm Johnny Game Time Hicks. And until next time, we're out. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Whisperers podcast. You can hear more from John and Travis on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at TF Whisperers.